this is a short video I'll make. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a little um, humbling, I guess, to stand in a room full of so many beautiful cars. Uh, none of these cars are mine. They all are cars in my family. Um, my mother's car, uh, my father's got a car in here, and my, the rest of these are my brother's cars. Uh, we're here in my, my little brother's uh, his garage that he built here um, at our parents' house. Um, it's a little bit of a um, early Ford and uh, Flathead Ford Museum, I guess. Um, I didn't think the cars would be uncovered uh, as it's uh, you know in the middle of the winter here, but the garage is so nice, it's dust free. Um, I just came out here to grab something and it looks as though all the all the cars are uncovered. So I thought, well, I'll just do a quick video. I'll do a short video and uh, walk you around and show you some of the finer um, points about these cars. They're kind of packed in here. I'm standing between them. They're about a foot and a half between these cars. But as you can see over my shoulder, there's, there's a variety of cars. So I'll take the camera and I'll walk around for a moment. So I didn't get permission from my brother to come out here and do a video. He doesn't care that I'm out here. I just didn't get permission to do a video of his, of his garage, but he shows it off or people come and, you know, visit and they get, to, they get a walk through. So I, I figured it's not a big deal to put a video out. Um, so the first car here right in the front, 55 Mercury Monterey. This is a, a car that my dad bought maybe 15 years ago. He was uh, just gonna clean it up and drive it and it it was it was a car that had uh, a lot of um a lot of i guess originality to it it never been a part it never been molested it needed a little bit of work on the inner fenders and a little bit of work on the rocker panels the body was pretty solid on it uh, we ended up taking the body off the frame just to give the frame a squirt i think it still has the original ball joints and in, in uh and um front end parts in it which could, should probably at this point could be replaced. I'm unsure of the mileage. It might be might be 70, 80,000 miles at this point on this car. Uh, the engine was, uh, I guess, mildly overhauled. I think it has some new parts in it. I think it has new rings in it and new gaskets, but other than that, it's not been fully rebuilt. Um, transmission was rebuilt. It's an automatic. This is a car that my mom can drive. It has the original interior in it. Everything except for the carpet is the original in this car. Again, it's 1955 Mercury. It's uh, I can't remember if this is a 292 or a 272, but they have a bunch of cars, and I forget all the details of all of them. It's a very, very fun car to drive. I think my dad put some uh, cherry bombs underneath it from something we had kicking around, so it's got a nice little stock car sound to it but it starts up runs goes down the road real nice kind of like riding on your sofa it's a beautiful car to ride around in the only the only interior issue in this car is it has a small tear in the front seat but these are the original front seats the original headliner the original dash the original door panels and uh we spend a lot of time riding around in this car this is probably the car that gets driven the most here i'm gonna move uh straight back here to a uh, second car. This is 1947 Ford four-door sedan. This was a car that I think originally my uncle Donnie owned this car when my dad was very young. Maybe one of the first cars my dad ever drove. Um, this car uh, was restored in the uh, early 90s. I would say it was finished around 1995 or 1996 maybe. Um, I really can't it's really tight in here though all the cars are packed in here there's three four five six cars and a motor home in here so um this car was restored the it, it did have a new body put on it uh because the body was just really really bad so a lot of the sheet metal has been replaced but the original original drivetrains in this car um been rebuilt obviously but like i said this car has been done for quite a long time um you know mid 90s uh this is a flathead V8. It's hard to see with the exposure here. Um, again, this camera isn't that expensive. I can switch the exposure, but I can't do it 
while I'm recording. Flathead V8, uh, this car is a, you know, 980, 990 point car out of 1,000 in early Ford V8. It's uh, very, very, very factory correct. Has, you know, all the correct bolts and finishes and the interior in this car is immaculate. It's beautiful inside. It's got the original um, pinstripe cloth uh, pattern. Uh, this, this interior is absolutely identical to the interior that it came with. Um, the original uh, fabric swatches were sent to LeBaron Bonnie, where they then replicated the original interior uh, you know, for us to install it. But this car is a uh, three-speed manual, of course, like all the early flatheads were. Um, but again, four-door sedan, uh, just a really nice car. This car going down the road is one of maybe the nicest riding cars. The, the back seat is enormous in it. You can, you can fit, I don't know, three, four people in the back seat. There's just a, a ton of leg room. Very comfortable car to ride around in. Um, I'm in the back here. Oh, here's my mom's bicycle. Um, this is a 48 Mercury Coupe. This is a local car, uh, just like the one, the 47 Ford. Um, I think all these cars, with the exception of two, are local, um, fairly local. Uh, this car was bought brand new in Lavo, Norton Verkler. This car was purchased by a gentleman who actually worked at the same place my mom worked when she started working there in the 70s. And when the car was finished being restored, they, uh, the gentleman was still alive and he got to have a few rides in it, go to some cruise nights. Uh, this is a car that was in a tool shed down the road for a long time. My dad knew about this car, tried to get this car. Finally, they moved the stuff out of the tool shed and called him and said, hey, if you still want this car, come and buy it. Um, car was in pretty good condition. Being a 48 Mercury Coupe, it's a fairly rare car. It's got a lot of trim on it, as all the 46 to 48 Mercury's do. They got the extra trim around the window. Um, this car, again, has an interior that is absolutely factory correct. It's identical to the, uh, to the interior that was in it when it was new. Again, all the swatches and everything were, were sent to LeBaron Bonnie and um, got a reflection here. But um, you can see inside, uh, it's very similar to the 47 Ford. Um, just a really, really nice old car. I think this was done about the time my little brother was getting out of high school. So he did this car in high school. Um, I'm not sure if he I can't remember if he finished it while I was in high school or not, maybe just right after. Um, again, factory correct, factory uh, authentic. What's, what's neat about this car is it's got a couple of extra accessories. It's got the, the, the fog light, or the spotlight, I should say. Um, we've actually used this going down the road in the rain one time, just kind of popped it out in front and helped us get home in a pretty heavy rain one time from a, um, one of our grandparents' anniversaries. Um, beautiful car, a lot of fun. Again, uh, not as big a back seat in this car as in the four-door sedan, but still very roomy, and very comfortable. You can just see how much padding there is. It's kind of it's, it's like sitting on your couch, um, but a really nice car. This car's been done a long time. Uh, I think my brother graduated from high school in 2000, so it's been 22, 23 years, this car. Uh, still looks pretty good. Probably could use a little bit of work, um, um, mechanical work, and maybe a tiny bit of dollop work. But again, this car is a ACA Grand National First Prize Senior Preservation Award, um, Early Ford V8 Club, um, a Dearborn winner, multiple Dearborn winner. And again, it's just a lot of fun to drive around. Uh, before I go to the front of the garage, I'm just going to go right next door to it, is a sister, uh, 48 Mercury convertible. So this is a car my brother picked up in Ohio, I think. Um, mostly intact, um, not in terrible condition, but needed a lot of work. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kissing cousin of the 48 Mercury Coupe. Um, everybody looks at it and says, oh, it's, the, it's, the, it's Mr. Miyagi's car from Karate Kid. Uh, not really, but close. Uh, that was a 46 or 47 Ford convertible, so they're very similar. Um, this color is, uh, I don't know, Tucson tan or something like that. Um, so a, an original color, 
Um, and again, this, is, uh, this has um, the leather with the original cloth style interior. As you can look, the Mercury convertibles were really um, high end. The wood grain, that's a hand painted wood grain. So it's, uh, it's, it's like a rolled um, roller with a texture to it. And you, you paint the base color and then you paint the, the wood grain onto it. But it looks like real wood grain. My brother did this. He had all the stencils made for the, for the dash and for the instruments. Um, worked really hard to rebuild the, the grill speaker plastic and get that painted nice. And the interior in this car is just absolutely um, crazy for 1948. It's really, it's really just uh, really comfortable and beautiful inside. Um, this is a fun car to drive as well. It drives just like the, uh, the coupe. Uh, I did get my brother to put the top down once. <laughs> Drove it once with the top down. He's a little reluctant to do it. I don't know if he doesn't want the top to be wrinkled or if, I guess it's a little bit of a pain to put the top down. It takes a few minutes. It's, it's kind of a tricky, but it does have a power top. It is hydraulic. It will, uh, it will go back by itself once you unlatch it, um, which makes it pretty cool. Again, flathead V8. Let me get back here where there's maybe a little bit of light, maybe not. Flathead V8. This car, I think, scored... 993 or 996 out of a thousand at the early Ford V8 show the first time it went. So it's a Dearborn winner. It is also um, is also maybe one of the first convertibles that we ever did. Um, maybe the first convertible we ever did. So a little bit of learning curve there. Not everybody restores convertibles. I guess I'll open the trunk on this because it's got a lot of room back here. You look at the trunk is just is just huge in this car. Um, just I think it's about three and a half feet, you know, into the back there. Heavy trunk lid too. Heavy trunk lid. Yep, 48 Mercury convertible. This car really pops when it's in the sun. It's just a beautiful car, especially with the black top in the red interior really sets it off okay uh two of the more rare cars um in the shop back here in the garage is uh the pair of 35 fords sitting here so um from the front you can tell they're 35 fords from the back you might look at the one on the left and say what the heck is that i'm going to get to that one second first i'm going to look at this 35 ford this is a 35 ford convertible sedan or a sedan convertible i don't know which way you say it uh, this is a car that is fairly rare. Uh, you see these once in a while kicking around. I think there's a couple up here. I think my brother's friend Errol has one. Um, pretty rare car. It's basically a Phaeton with windows. So it has a removable uh, door post here. There's a thumb screw back here. You can unscrew the door post top and bottom and take it out. Roll the windows down, put the top down, and essentially you have an open car, uh, basically a Phaeton. What makes this car kind of unique is, is that it is a four-door convertible. The back, the back portion of the front seat is what holds the car together. So that, that um, portion you see with the hand lace there, the, the hand bar there, to, or the hand rope to, to get in and out, that portion is, is welded to both of the lower door pan, um, posts. The, the car is held together by that center section of the seat. It's not removable. It's almost like a dual cowl car because of that. Um, genuine 35 Ford interior. Um, I do think my brother got either, I don't know if it's the clock that goes in the glove box door or if it's the one that's in the mirror. But he uh, got a, a really rare accessory for it recently. Um, but again, three-speed manual. Um, 100% factory correct interior. The, uh, this car actually came from a garage in Potsdam, New York, that my brother had seen this car many, many years before he ended up buying it. And the uh, car was not for sale. It was being restored. And the gentleman was fairly old that was restoring it. Let me see if I can get the, uh, the hood open here quick. 
Okay, there we go. The gentleman was restoring this car, sat around for a long time. He never finished it. My brother ended up getting it from him. He was in his 90s, and the rest is history. But again, 35 Ford, convertible sedan. The last car over here, maybe one of the most rare cars in the world. I think that we know of four of these in the world. This is a 35 Ford from Germany. It's called a Glosser. Glosser of Germany. They were in Dresden, as you can see there, Glosser. They were a coach builder. They built uh, custom coach built cars of different varieties, Mercedes, um, you know, uh, different, different brands in Germany. Um, this is a 35 Ford version. They made different body styles, limousines, cabriolets. This is a custom coach built cabriolet. You can see the size of the front doors in this car. The front half's 35 Ford of Germany. Uh, genuine 35 Ford. Right straight out of the Cologne, Germany um, plant. It's hard to see the, you can see it says, it says Deutsch Erzegenis. Probably pronounced that poorly. I'll lift the hood on this car quick, just so you can see it. Again, it's got, it's got a replacement 35 Ford motor in it. It did not have the original motor from Germany in it but it has all the Germany parts bolted on. It's got the new old stock aluminum cast oil pan in it, and it's got uh, the Bosch starter on it and all the original 35 Ford from Germany parts in it. This car is, is uh, German through and through. If I can get the door open here. The door, like I said, it, it's, it's ginormous. Look how big this door is. All wood with metal wrapped around, and nailed on. It's got the European side markers that come out, the signal lights that come out when you turn the signal lights on. If you look at the dash, it has um, the speedometers in kilometers an hour. The, uh, all the gauges, it's really, you just won't be able to read them in this uh, low light, but the gauges are all in German, um, like the fuel gauge says benzene um, and then you have uh, you have some other German language written on other things uh, this car was restored mostly in the 60s it was um, this has the interior in it that was in it when my brother bought it this car is essentially the way my brother bought it except it wasn't completely assembled so it has a paint job on it from the 60s. I think it's a lacquer job, maybe, maybe late 60s, early 70s. Um, it's 100% complete and intact. Um, pretty sure that it's the most correct glosser that's out there. There is one that won at Pebble Beach. My brother told me that it didn't have the right hubcaps on it or something like that, or it didn't have things that were um, quite as authentic as his. If you look at the trunk lid, you have to unscrew the trunk lid to open it. So you have to take these screws and unscrew them. This car is even authentic down to the wheels. The wheels are actually different wheels than the 35 Ford wheels from the US. It has a different number of spokes. On top of that, the 35 Ford wheels in Germany, uh, they say made in Germany on the inside of them. this trunk unscrewed it and get it back here it's very heavy with the spare tire on it as you can see it doesn't really come back very far oh, it's got a cable but it's a deep trunk inside very interesting car very unique very 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 rare it's kind of funny to go to a show and see the the older gentlemen come up to it and start looking at it and they all just scratch their heads like what is this what is this thing so So kind of a trick to get the trunk lid back on. Can't, you can't screw one of them in all the way before you start the other one, or else you can't get the other one started. There we go. Okay, so the shop itself, the, or the garage itself, now you can see some uh, extra wheels and tires that came off of this car. My brother struggled for a while he had a vibration he found a bent rim um, so he ended up doing about four or five more rims 
It's original uh, Ford sales uh, advertising. Mercury, Mercury, Ford. Some interesting uh, posters and things like that that he's come up with. eBay and Craigslist. Some factory black and white photos of assembly. My brother also has a 46 um, pickup. This, this uh, a sister to the one my dad has. I'm not sure where that truck is right now, if it's in the... My brother's truck is with him. I don't know where my dad's truck is or else I'd video that. Might be in our other building. Sportsman, which is uh, something that I think my brother would love to have. Just some genuine wall hanging things. They're big on golf here in the shop, in the garage. They're big on golf. I'll come back over here for just a second. They're, uh, they've got multiple golf gas pumps. So you can see this golf gas pump here. No globe on it. This golf gas pump. That good golf gasoline. And then golf no Knox pump. Um, not too long ago finished, I guess. Ford service desk. My brother's put together here. He's restored this. Keeps the telephone on it, I guess. I don't know what else he keeps it. Oh, some cleaning supplies. Look at that. Beautiful. And then his little glass case of various um, historical oddities. Um, Ford uh, accessory boxes. So I'm guessing that a lot of these still have accessories in them. I know some of them do, like the engine compartment lamp does. I've seen that one out, you know, out of the box. Um, this one's very interesting down here in the bottom. Tire pump kit. Take a spark plug out, take the coil wire off, and you uh, crank the engine and it blows up the tire. Very interesting. My mom's motorhome is taking up a lot of the space here. But again, just, my brother's got it kind of, uh, He's got it kind of uh, set up a little bit like a little museum. It's pretty nice. I'll go back here, get around these cars. Again, we don't do a lot of automotive content on our channel, only because just haven't done it. Uh, but as you can see here, beautiful uh, garage to store the cars in and my brother and my father have a lot of really nice cars. Little Firestone tire display here with a Firestone wide oval. I believe this is the bent rim from the Mercury convertible. I'm not a big early Ford V8 guy. I enjoy the cars, I appreciate them, but it's not something I'm into collecting. But it is something my brother collects and he's really good at it. And I thought it'd just be nice to share the, share the video with you folks to see kind of all the interesting things. Like I said, maybe in another video, um, if you're ever in upstate New York and you wanna Get up close and personal and see some of these cars. If it's nice weather, maybe go for a ride, whatever. They always love to show the place out and, uh, you know, talk about old Fords. Especially if you have one and you show up with one. Al's Body Shop, Beaver Falls, New York, the back garage. Thanks for watching.